in this session we are going to look at the basics of probability so this is the first session on series of probability and statistics the two areas probability and statistics are highly related we can start learning those individually but when it comes to advanced usages we have to combine those two concepts together so we will be starting with probability Let's briefly look at what are the key usages of probability. We use probability in scientific research, especially in natural science like physics, chemistry, biology, because nature is not perfect. And again, when it comes to engineering, we have to work with matters, energy, they are again the natural phenomena. So we can't make things perfect. So then we have to take some probabilistic decisions. For reliability and quality. Another area where probability is heavily used these days is AI. When it comes to non-AI based applications, we can use formal logic. But when it comes to processing fuzzy logics, we need to rely on the probability and statistical concepts to come up with the best possible solution. The finance, business and marketing is another area we can use probability. When it comes to analyzing marketing trends, when it comes to calculating risk, we heavily use probability. And also, when it comes to research in social and political aspects, we have to rely on probability and statistics. For example, what is the probability of a particular candidate winning the next election? So let's look at our plan for the probability part. So in this session, we will be looking at the basics. So then we will move on to the mutual exclusive events and independent events in our next session. So then we will move on to advanced concepts like conditional probability, Bayes theorem, total probability law and so on. And then we will move on to the statistics as well. The prerequisites to understand this particular session is the basic understanding about the sets. So let's quickly recap your knowledge on sets. So what is a set? Set is collection of elements where no duplicate elements are allowed and order of elements is not important. So then you must know what is universal set. The universal set is a set that contains total interested context. So empty set is a set containing no elements. So then you must know what are the basic sets operations like intersection, union and complement operations. And finally, you must have a feeling about what is mean by subset. We say that A is a subset of B if all the elements in A are elements in B as well. Now let's formally define what is probability is. The probability is the scientific or logical prediction of possibility of event happening. If you first understand the basic concepts in probability really seriously, you are in a really good position to understand the advanced concepts. So therefore, let's first look at the basic terminology. So we are going to look at four terms here. The concept called experiment, outcome, sample space and event. Those four concepts are highly related but four different things. So let's see one by one. So let's first look at what is mean by experiment. An experiment is doing an act which has possible outcomes. An instance of an experiment is called a trial. For example, let's take some simple experiments like throwing a dice, tossing a coin, taking a ball from a bag. So those are simple typical experiments we can do. And when it comes to real world, it can be you take a product item randomly and see whether it's in good quality or not. So that is an experiment. You pick a person and ask to which candidate you are going to vote in the next election. So those are all experiments. Now let's move on to what is mean by outcomes. 
the result of a trial of an experiment is called an outcome for example if you throw a dice the possible outcomes can be getting one getting two getting three getting four getting five and getting six if you toss a coin there are only two possible outcomes that is getting hit or getting dead the third concept that we are going to look at is the concept called sample space sample space of an experiment is set of all possible outcomes for example if you throw a dice the set of all possible outcomes are getting one two three four five or six so therefore our sample space is a set containing the elements one to six if you take tossing a coin as an experiment the sample space consists of head and tail so the final concept that we are going to look at is the concept called event and this is the most important concept when it comes to probability because we assign probability to an event an event is set of outcomes that one can expect as a result of trial of an experiment it's all about your imagination your expectation but we say that it's a valid event if that event is possible otherwise we say that the event is impossible event we are more interested about the possible events so if it is a possible events at least one of the outcome must belong to your event so we can clearly see that all the individual outcomes are also possible events for example if you throw a dice getting 6 is an event because 6 is also an outcome getting 2 is an event that we can think of and also it is possible and there can be some other events where multiple outcomes can be part of that event for example if you think of an event as getting even numbers so that has that covers the outcome 2 4 and 6 and always if it is a possible event your elements in your events is a subset of the sample space if not it is an impossible event so we are more interested in the possible events so let's take that example of throwing a dice so obviously getting one to six are possible events because they are outcomes and also we can think of events like getting odd number getting a prime number getting a number greater than four and so on and also our event can be a composite event like getting number greater than four or less than two now let's move on to the the fundamental formula of probability so this is a fundamental formula so therefore you don't need a proof because it is intuitive the basic common sense so if you have an event a which is inside your sample space we say that probability of event a happening equals number of elements in event a divided by number of elements in the sample space okay so let's take few examples say we have an event where we are throwing a dice consisting one to six and our expectation or our event is getting six so what is the probability of getting six First of all, we want to find out what is the sample space for this particular experiment. So if you throw a dice consisting 1 to 6, obviously the sample space is getting 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 because those are the 6 outcomes. So therefore number of elements in the sample space is 6. And now we have to look at which outcomes belong to our event. So it is obviously the outcome 6. So therefore number of elements in our event is 1. So therefore by using the fundamentals formula of probability, the probability of A happening or getting 6 is Na divided by Ns that is 1 divided by 6. 
So let's look at the second example. The same experiment, now the event is getting an odd number. Again, the sample space is the same. Now our event covers three outcomes. The outcome one, three and five. So therefore, number of elements in our event B is three. So therefore, the probability is three divided by six. So in probability, usually we don't simplify the values or rather than just writing it as one over two, we just say three over six. Let's take the third example. So what is the probability of getting a prime number? Again, so the prime numbers are two, three and five. So therefore three elements are there in our event. So therefore probability is again three divided by six. So the fourth example, so the event is getting a number greater than 4. So again, the greater than 4 means in, inside the sample space, the possible outcomes are 5 and 6. So therefore, there are two elements. Therefore, the probability of D happening is 2 divided by 6. Right, let's look at some properties about probability. Formula of probability of event A happening is number of elements in event A divided by number of elements in the sample space. And our event A must always be inside the sample space. So therefore, definitely the number of elements in an event A must be less than or equal to number of elements in the sample space. Therefore, your probability is always a fraction. A proper fraction or else we can say that the probability is between 0 and 1. If the probability is 0 that means number of elements in A is 0 that means it's an impossible event. None of the outcomes belong to the event that we are looking at and if the probability is event A is 1 that means the number of elements in event A is same as number of elements in the sample space. So that means each outcome is part of your event. So it, that means it's a certain event. And all the other probability values are between 0 and 1. And also if you have an event A which is a subset of event B your probability of event A is less than or equal to the probability of event B. So next we are going to look at the probability of complement event. So if you know the probability of event A happening, the probability of event A not happening is 1 minus probability of event A happening. Again, it is common sense. If probability of getting 6 is 1 upon 6, the probability of not getting 6 is 1 minus 1 upon 6, that is 5 upon 6. So let's take an example. So what is the probability of not getting 6 for the same experiment? And we know that the probability of getting 6 is 1 upon 6. So therefore probability of not getting 6 is 1 minus 1 upon 6, that is 5 upon 6. Finally, we are going to look at what is mean by exhaustive events. A set of events are said to be exhaustive if all the outcomes are part of at least one of the event. So let's take an example. Say this is a Venn diagram with sample space S and we have set of events A1, A2, etc. Now, if you take any points here, that point belong to one or more of the events. None of the points are there which is not belong to any of the events. So, therefore, these events are exhaustive events. For example, if I point somewhere here, it belongs to A4 and also A5. And you can clearly see that if we have a set of exhaustive events, the union of those events is your sample space. And let's take a scenario where we have set of events but they are not exhaustive. 
so that means there can be some outcomes which are not belong to any of the events that you are interested for example if i go to somewhere here you can clearly see that this point does not belong to any of the events and when it comes to non exhaustive events their union is not going to be same as the sample space now we are done with the the basics of probability in our next session we are going to look at the mutually exclusive events and independent events so then we move on to the other advanced topics in probability and later into the statistics so i hope you have a very good understanding about the basics of probability because if you have if you have really confidence about your basics if you are really serious about your basics you are in a really good position to understand the advanced concepts if you feel like this session is really useful and interesting make sure you like it and also if you haven't done yet make sure you subscribe so that you will be notified when future sessions are uploaded